Good morning. It is Sister Kate here. And after all the stress and the gloom and doom of the Wuhan pneumonia virus and videos on that and, I, you know, spending long hours at night watching as the numbers climb up, I thought I would give you a different kind of video today uh, on a topic that I forget how it came up, but it's come up in the time since we came back from West Virginia. And I kind of had it sitting on the back burner. Um, and I, I just think, you know, lighten up the mood a little bit because it doesn't seem like the flu uh, news is going to get much better right now. We still see the numbers climbing. So it is a legislative violence. And I know you're thinking, all right, Sister Kate, what exactly are you talking about? It is a thing. It's on the Wikipedia. Look at that. I'm pushing my own stand around. Come on. Give Sister Kate a break. There we go. Um, it's on the Wikipedia. And it, it the whole thing was spurred while we were driving. I was thinking of my daughter because she was doing research for something. And she came across a very famous act of violence uh, in our American legislation, nat national legislation, uh, like House of Representatives, where David Bowie was there and and carried a knife in his boot and he used to sharpen it while people were talking on like his boot leather and there were a couple of brawls and I've got them written down here uh, where people like just wailed on each other with canes. So I was thinking about that incident in, in relation to our modern polit politics and how crazy some of these p political situations drive past or not. Like, well, we'll um, like the, uh, the uh, lobby day in Virginia, where the media immediately calls it a gun rally and, and, and just focuses in on, oh, there's so many long guns and, you know, potential violence. And there were three people, you know, who like to stir up trouble. Uh, I think they were called the base, who were arrested before that lobby day. And I thought that was a really smart move on whichever, look at this guy wants to get involved. Here's his mommy talking and he wants to be right there, you big goober. Um, uh, and I don't know who arrested them, the FBI or whoever. Uh, and that probably did change the flavor of what was going on there. But nothing happened. You had a bunch of peaceful law-abiding citizens exercising their right to lobby their new government on an issue that was important to them. And they, I, I have no idea if they, they were the only ones there because the media didn't report on anybody else, but there should have been people there from like uh, um, Right to Life and, you know, educators because they want to lobby for, you know, more pay and, and maybe first responders for the same, but we didn't hear anything about that. And those kind of things drive us nuts and we get... We get a little fired up, and then if you go on Twitter or Facebook, you see the same thing. People get fired up about political topics. So, <clears throat> I decided to research it. I decided to research, you know, how, is this still a thing? And by golly, it sure is. There is a whole list of countries on that Wikipedia page that, and, and for each country, it cites incidents of violence and it's not just old ones ours started old i think our first incident in america was 1798 so let me just go through a few because i think they're kind of amusing uh in australia so this is a very new one like i tried to find i don't think they had anything listed for 2020 but they had uh in february 2019 in australia uh two men kind of got in a scuffle over some Issue, I you know, I'm not going to go into the political issues and stuff, but a, a guy named Brian Burston and James Ashby got in a scuffle. And then the next one that caught my eye was the Canadians. Because if you know anything about the, the uh, cultural image of a Canadian, you know, the actor Ryan Reynolds and, and Pastor and I had dealings with... Um, a Canadian officer and his wife when we were overseas and Pastor was in the military school there. Nice but boring. They called themselves nice but dull and they were the nicest, most polite uh, people. And they were just, I mean, you would love to have them as neighbors. So with that in mind, here is the Canadian listing for 2012 
there was a threatening confrontation, a near brawl when two people in their legislation <coughs> disagreed. So that's the Canadian equivalent of a knockdown punch, you know, fight, a near brawl. And then in 2016, Justin Trudeau, who was, you know, a very popular prime minister, manhandled whip Gord Brown. So the whip is, you know, the minority leader or whoever, majority leader. He manhandled him. Um, and he elbowed a woman named Ruth Brusso. Elbowed her accidentally. So he's manhandling this guy. The elbow nudges her. They called that thing elbow gate. <laughs> I mean, you elbow accidentally, right? Or <laughs> somebody, oh, in Canada, that, you basically like threw them to the ground. So I thought that was really, really cute. So, and then uh, we're, we're kind of, I'm going to hop around, but in 1988, there was a European uh, legislation, and I, I don't remember who these people were, but somebody stood up because the Pope was a guest and called him the Antichrist. And that started a little bit of a scuffle in that legislation, oh. right? A kerfuffle, that's a really good name. And then in the same year, which is the year my son was born, uh, the Tamil Nadu legislation. So where's Tamil? The Tamil Tigers are... Tamil Alam! That's uh, like Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, okay. South of India. South of India, there we go. It's an island, right? Yeah, big one. Yeah, big island. The assembly there had a riot... And they don't. hit each other, clubbed each other with microphones and footwear. <laughs> I hit you with my shoe. I hit you with my shoe. Down, down, bush. Down, down, bush. I mean, can you just imagine a riot where they're beating each other with the microphones? I mean, come on. And there, there was a very famous quote, and again, I you, go to the thing, I didn't memorize all this stuff, where a man said, if you get a bunch of people in a small location, uh, mm, yeah, I think get you'd back. be all right. If you get a bunch of people in a small location, and it's hot. Now, this would have been before air conditioning, and they're talking about issues that are very, uh, uh, you know, get people fired up. This kind of behavior is going to be the result. Like this dog who keeps kicking. I'm going to start beating you with this you want the tripod line? stand. That'd be great. Um, so they had a, a riot. That's what it was called. And the next one after that one, uh, which was in 1997. So we've stepped forward a few years. It was in Uttar Pradesh. So Uttar Pradesh is probably Nepal. Yeah, up there. Yeah, you know, somewhere in that area. They had a little kerfuffle, too, and they threw <coughs> microphones, chairs, and other items at each other, and the security people there pulled the desktop te desktops off and used them as shields so they wouldn't get hit. Um, I, I think that's real. I mean, I think you're getting a little extreme when you're picking up a desktop to to uh, make sure you don't get speared by a microphone. And then moving down, there's Israel. And this is really amazing about Israel. This is, it's the same thing as Canada, as a national identity. They just have a little thing that says violence happens in their legislation, and that's all it says. <laughs> they don't say anything about what they say to each other or if they come to blows. They just have that little cryptic, like, it happened. Okay, Israel. All right, fine. Don't share. Whatever. Um, Italy in 2010. So now we're getting kind of modern. Don't you, don't you do it. A brawl broke out. Can, I, to me, that's kind of funny too because the Italians generally, I've been to Italy, very reserved. They're very, you know, they dress very nice. Um, you don't see kerfuffles on the street in Italy. If you do, it's immigrants doing something. The Italians are very low-key and very uh, dignified. But they had a brawl breakout in their legislation. And so did Japan in 2015. But that's within the last five years, 2015. And again, the Japanese, I mean, you know, they are very about manners and being polite and bowing and everything. And a brawl breaks out in their legislation. Brawl. That's multiple people. 
Um, in Kenya, lawmakers came to blows. So they're, you know, way beyond what Canada considers is, is acceptable behavior. Um, in 2016, in Kosovo, tear gas was released in Parliament. Think about that for a minute. Can you imagine watching, like, the BBC and they've got the, you know, Parliament meeting and you've got the, the little box where the guy speaks and the guy's lined up and they've got their papers and they're, yay, yeah, yay, yeah, no, no, and then somebody releases tear gas in there? It would be like a scene out of a movie. It would be people crying, snot coming out of their noses. I mean, anyway. So we go from that. Now, this is Kosovo. Same year, we go to Kuwait. Okay? So Kuwaitis are Arabic of some kind. And their, their brawl, their riot, was what they called a shoe fight. Because in that... Um, culture and in other cultures the foot is is um where the head is revered the foot is you know bad not acceptable so if you really don't like somebody you throw the shoe or you beat the shoe remember somebody threw one at president bush when he was given a press conference in the middle east somewhere yeah shoe fight i think that'd be a hoot i think that'd be a really good video uh scene for a movie too, a shoe fight. Um, but if you think about legislation and, and I can see some people being very offended and thinking, you know, this is not how civilized people should behave. This is not how your elected representative should behave. Uh, they should be very dignified and they should discuss things on an intellectual level and there should be none of that. Then you come to South Korea. South Korea had a lot of incidents in the last five years, and there's something in particular about South Korea I kind of can get behind. If you're a legislator and you get in a brawl in South Korea, very seldom are you pressed, are there charges made against you? Because I am sure in other countries, if the legislators start brawling, you know, there could be charges by the, uh, the authority like in our country would be the Department of Justice or something, would bring charges. And then there'd be all the civil suits. And, they, you know, he stabbed me or he uh, poked me in the eye with a pencil and all that and suing for damages. And South Korea hardly ever happens. So they get to brawl it out a lot. Now, I think that's amusing. I think that's kind of funny. Because what do they do all day? They, they, they sit there in suits and they yak, 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 yak. I mean... I would get a little fed up with that, especially if that guy over there is talking nonsense. I would want to get in a brawl. Um, and I thought about if, if you took it to the next level, right, and, and it became something that was acceptable, like say in America, you, you've got a bunch of representatives in the House and the Senate. You've got a bunch of dudes and the guys that we're electing now to represent us are usually kind of, you know, pudgy white dudes, lawyers. There are lots of women. Don't I don't disallow that because the women in in the uh, these different governmental bodies they get in fights too. They 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 grab microphones away from people, and I, I don't have it written down, but the, I did read the one incident where there was a piece of legislation up, and a woman grabbed the legislation and stuck it in her mouth. And then the other guys, her opposition, were trying to get her to spit it out, so she finally spit it out, and then she tore it up. I mean, the women get into it, too. Um, but So let's, let's just think about that for one minute. Uh, Netanyahu right now represents Israel. We've got uh, the, the other Trudeau guy. I thought it was his son or something for Canada. We have Macron for France, um, Boris Johnson for England. We have um, Donald Trump representing our country. Now, Donald Trump's in his 70s, but he's a big guy. If you see him standing next to people, he's like six foot three. Would they stay in power if people got to brawl over politics? I'm saying I think we'd see a totally different group of people elected to office um, Khabib, Numa something or other, is a is a uh, Russian MMA fighter. I, I think he'd represent Russia. And I think Ireland would throw Conor McGregor up there and be like, all right, now talk politics. Well, and then if we don't agree, let's go at it. You know, 
you would get a, uh, people like Dwayne Johnson might represent the United States under those circumstances, or Holly Holmes, because she's, you know, a pretty, pretty tough little chick. Um, I think that's, keep that in mind, because we're going to keep going on. I have another point to make. In Taiwan, they were given what's called the IG Nobel Prize. So I'm, I'm wondering, I should have researched that. IG might mean um, uh, ignominious or something for demonstrating, quote, that politicians gain more by punching, kicking, and gouging each other than by waging war with other countries, end quote. Okay, Taiwan. Sounds... <laughs> You should video that. You should put that up there. I think if you put it on YouTube, you get lots of views with your Taiwanese legislators punching, kicking, and gouging each other. I mean, the MMA videos and stuff get millions of views. Um, and then I wanted to end it with some of the ones in the United States. Um, because that's what they used to do here in America. Yeah, politicians... Oh my God, just look up Andrew Jackson and how many duels that man got into. Look at the Aaron Burr and, uh, oh, now I can't think of his name. Aaron Burr. Ah, oh, all right. Well, you guys know they had a duel and one of them shot each other uh, and killed the other guy. Um, in 1798, there was a fight going on in the legislature where a guy was caning somebody else and the other guy grabbed tongs from the the chimney to grab hot coals out and they kind of beat each other for a while and other people got involved uh in 1837 a person stabbed another person committed murder right there on the floor um in 56 was a very famous caning where some you know someone was i think caned unconscious and in 1858 there was a massive brawl I think that would be pretty entertaining. Um, and it doesn't just stay at the national level. In Alabama, in the last five years, there was a bloody backroom brawl between the mayor and the council member. Bloody backroom brawl. I'm telling you, I think this, this quote for, the, for Taiwan, that more gets done by them punching, kicking, and gouging each other rather than wage war, I think that makes the most sense. What do you guys think? I hope you found it entertaining. Thanks for watching. Shalom.